Hello and welcome to hopefully a successful Assassin's Creed Valhalla live stream analysis of what can only be described as the most astonishing or one of the most astonishing uh, misnomers I've seen in computer game marketing in quite a while and that is the gameplay trailer that continues that, that contains absolutely no gameplay footage whatsoever for this game but it does contain some astounding uh insights into actually what i consider to be my worst fear for this game when i when i cast eyes on the uh the cinematic trailer that was released a little while ago i'm no, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Let's just watch the trailer and then we'll talk about it a little bit. But it, it yeah, okay, play. Footage rep representative, apparently. As ever, the music is great in these trailers. Bit of ever e evanescence, evanescent. <laughs> That kind of uh, feel going on, but essentially it's a it's a montage at this stage. So a Welsh dragon there maybe, which I shouldn't be anyway. Stonehenge. Horn blowing. Charging the castle, apparently. Some incredible axe work. And trailer closes. And I'm unlikely getting it. Uh, certainly unlikely to be getting a review copy <laughs> in this instance, because um, well, uh, this is a less than impressive uh, trailer. For a start, I'd say there's absolutely no gameplay in this gameplay trailer uh, footage. The, the, there's what they later described as a taster of elements of gameplay. For example, uh, this sort of you know, combat that they show here. I'll turn off the volume. Uh, you know, combat. Uh, but then again, none of this is new for Assassin's Creed. You know, We know what sort of gameplay to expect. <clears throat> However, what I what I what I feared most was that having seen castles in the the initial cinematic trailer, uh, that 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 would have an impact on how the game would be played. Uh, and I, I'm just cutting straight to it. What the actual frig is this? What the feck is going on uh, in this in this Vikings game now? I don't know, arguably, no, there's not really an argument that can be made. What I'm seeing here is 12th, 13th century warfare, siege warfare, no less. And, and, and again, the fact that, that you've got these, these, what look like fairly medieval castles, not even Roman fortifications, which have had time to erode. For example, here we can see this section here. I mean, that is squarish. Maybe that's a Roman tower. Fingers crossed if that is the case. If that's the case, then, you know, wonderful, wonderful. But this stuff here, round tower, the wooden uh, overhanging defences here, the, it's all essentially the Crusades. And not far off that, 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 that kind of style of combat. And I can't help but wonder whether Ubisoft are just wanting to, to get back to Altair get back to what 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 where they started with assassin's creed which was in the holy land and with uh crusader castles etc but in this case siege warfare this isn't vikings this isn't th that sort of norman keep kind of setup in the middle there this is not a viking era stuff building in stone like this 
and having this building here for a couple of generations, at least for the look of it, or, or at least 10 years, maybe 10, 15 years, is not correct to the game. And the thing is, I, I recognise that the game should be entertaining. I want to be entertained as well. But given that, that what was it, Assassin's Creed Origins went so far as to have uh, an educational um, version of the game, uh, it was it was a a game that the a version of of, of origins that was um shipped to schools where people could explore a realistic egyptian uh, world that sort of that, that time when romans and egyptians were interacting and you know the the the, 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 the opportunities for learning in that section in that so that space uh and in that way were 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 rightly uh celebrated but in this instance if if someone offered this as a viking learning um simulator by the look of it if this is an insight into gameplay then you'd be better off watching uh oh uh i don't know eric the viking you know <laughs> you know be better off watching conan the barbarian uh than 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 playing the, uh, this and expecting to learn anything as you go and and last time we spoke about this, when the cinematic trailer came out, I was really charitable. I was really going, well, fingers crossed. Hopefully, hopefully, what we're seeing is just is just a you know is 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 an early thing, and and it's not really going to you know hopefully hope, hopefully fingers crossed they're going to be able to turn things around. And the thing is, that some of it looks promising. Okay, so so you know, let's look at the rest of it. And we have people feasting in a hall. Although, again, the the thing of the high table with the chair at the top, and the way it's laid out here, it's it's just not quite right. It's all a little bit later than, as it were, early medieval. Um, we have what's here that this is someone sitting up in the eaves of a really grand hall this is kind of getting on to this notion of almost herald uh the 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 hall in beowulf for um i don't know something like we is described from some sources as being say at Uppsala, this kind of thing really ex extensive viking um architecture here and, and it does exist you know there are there are there are churches for example that have beautiful and impressive architecture like this but Again, things like sitting up in the eaves, and I recognise that that's something which you see in um, in Assassin's Creed throughout. For example, in Assassin's Creed Two, the two brothers Ezio and his brother go, you know, on a jaunt through the city over the rooftops, which is unrealistic, really. Not many, but you know, it wouldn't be. Put it this way: no, no, most people don't go. Let's go for a run on the rooftops, do they? Unless they're, you know, assassins or superheroes. And so I'm willing to to let these things go. Yeah, this sort of stuff is fine, you know, in that sense. If this is a game, and I recognise that, and it's an Assassin's Creed game. Uh, incidentally, um, the statue in the first trailer, I believe, wasn't Odin. It was uh, Tyr, and that is probably Thor with his, with his hammer. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm guessing it's Thor with his hammer. Uh, but then again, that looks a bit Tyr, Tyr-y, as it were, with his moustache. But anyway, Tyr... Um, a god of war, uh, and and after whom Tuesday is named, incidentally, Tirsdag, the Dyer. Uh, we see our protagonist Ivor. You can be a woman or a man in this version. They're both called Ivor in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It was Cassandra and not Kratos. Uh, <laughs> Cassandra and. The male one, I can't remember what the male one's called, but I, I played as Cassandra, and that was cool. You know, that was fine. In this instance, you know, I, I'm glad that people get it, are getting that choice again. This is the uh, this is the Assassin's Blade as it is um, at this point. It's on the outside of the wrist, not the inside of the wrist. And the thing as well, again, I'm a big fan of Assassin's Creed. It through there in the living room. I have um, I have a, a, a black flag statue i have a, a, a version of the, the assassin's blade i have all sorts of little maps and things from previous games i love assassin's creed but this is oh, worrying and concerning um in a barn apparently uh ivor is uh i love the i like the quite like the lights there using the horns uh the basket work looks you know again some of it looks fine um tattooing that's quite cool uh you know it's it's all it's all so close, but then they just go and drop a massive 
turd. Like, for example, that. What the f*** is that stone tower? This is presumably in Scandinavia, as so they're leaving, uh, probably to, to, to raid in, in England, either either uh, Essex or Northumbria. And uh, there's a stone tower with crenellations up there. This is not the this is not the time for that in this game and i don't understand why is it that that oh incidentally sorry one more thing i, I really do like the implementation of um of the raven as a version of uh the the assassin's uh vision and connection to you know, throughout all the games, they have an eagle flying through, don't they? And and the eagle, uh, the jump that you do, there's always an eagle that squeals when you jump. Kind of thing. In this instance, it's a raven, and that's a great connection to Odin, uh, thought and memory, his pet ravens, uh, so on and so forth. Um, I quite like this. Uh, implication of prehistoric monuments, although I'm not quite sure what sort of monument that's meant to be specifically there. Uh for various reasons it's not again not quite right but yeah, i like the idea that, that, that there is prehistory in this game we know that the vikings for example visited my uh, maze how uh, up in scotland and uh, left graffiti inside there they were investigating prehist prehistoric stuff um yeah that looks like a welsh dragon red white and green with a, Nor a norman era sort of kite shield in the ninth century uh, and there we have um, stone castle, stone church. I mean, no, no, that's more of a stone castle. It's it's wrong. It's like the night. It's like the Vikings cross the North Sea and beam into the eleventh century, at least the eleventh century, if not twelfth, thirteenth century. More stone over there. More stone over there. If if, you know, if they wanted to make a later medieval game, make it. By all means, but who have they consulted on this? I, as I say, I know that they've that they've consulted um, with, with with people, presumably about story and language and uh, and and Viking culture. But what? Who can? Who have they consulted about 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 British and English and and Northern European archaeology? Presumably, they haven't. Really, they've just gone with what feels cool, and that's not been that's not been. The reason that I've loved these games previously is that they've 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 wanted to often surprise you with real history in those games, with real places, from real people, real behaviours, um, uh, with with the hyper reality of the, of the assassins on top of that, and and they haven't always got it absolutely right. Sometimes they 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 you know, they they're a, they're a few years out, say in their. Uh, who's alive when and what specific i don't know types of clothes people are wearing this kind of thing you know they they, they chuck in um uh plague doctors a little bit early for example in assassin's creed brotherhood but it's it's all kind of it's all kind of you know fuzzy around the edges it's never so egregious as to take effectively 200 years in the future of technology or building or architecture and plonk it into a game where it's just not or into a time period where it just wasn't around i like this uh, again more hints of paganism the tree in the background we know that people um certainly in saxon england were worshiping uh well no actually no we're not in the ninth century though <laughs> um Again, this is actually wrong. Sorry, this is actually wrong. <laughs> By this point, the Saxons weren't worshipping trees. There wasn't a, a much of a crossover in that sense between typical uh, Saxon culture in terms of paganism and Viking culture. This may well be a Viking site in Scandinavia, or maybe one that they set up in a colony in, in England, perhaps. Uh, but anyway, the tree... Yggdrasil, because of the connection, and a connection presumably to earlier prehistoric monuments or standing stone, I guess, again, kind of cool, evocative, Stonehenge for no reason other than to have a time lapse. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to see uh, some of the Saxons having appropriate shields here, round shields. Interestingly, they've gone for a slightly smaller design than would be typical. This is almost like a approaching a buckler uh, in terms of size, but you know, fine. It's round at least, for goodness' sake, and they're not all kite shields. Um, but they are standing in a stone castle for some for some reason. I don't. <laughs> um, hang on, let me just go back a second. Uh, it's 
this is passable. You know, again, it's sort of it's approaching Conan the Barbarian in terms of some details of the clothing and the and the belt, etc. But but that that there is just out of place. I, I know I keep on repeating myself, but I'm I, I'm disappointed. I'm really disappointed, and I, I really hate to say that. Are you sure they didn't accidentally wind up in High Rock as they crossed the North Sea? Showing up in Tamriel would be. Uh, <laughs> about as believable you know what you're right you're right the assassin the 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 vikings crossed the north sea and they ended up in um in uh in the elder scrolls um yeah that's what that's what happened that's what happened there you go that's what happened that's that one. <laughs> we just need to see uh one of the viking uh the vikings do a a a, a fus roda shout you know do a dragon do some dragon language maybe see a dragon in the sky you know really push this over the edge uh this is kind of again cool it's evocative but again what he's wearing is not necessarily accurate but again this is this i'm, I'm willing to forgive fuzz around the edge you know i enjoy a little bit of fuzz around the edge as it were because because the thing is archaeology in particular, is dealing with what's left behind. So, so some of the softer stuff like leather, etc. You know, I've got a, a long-standing um, opinion about uh, boots, for example. So, uh, if you most reenacting groups when they're doing Vikings won't allow you to have grips on your boots. It has to be smooth shoes because smooth shoes of what we found but what we found only exists in cities because those layers have built up quickly and this the leather wasn't being reused or it's been lost or something like that and it certainly hasn't been plowed and tilled in the earth and therefore lost however we know that people before the saxon and vikings had hobnail boots romans definitely did Fusroda, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, and we know that these guys were coming from a place where it's super slippy quite often, especially in the winter. No one in their right minds would go outside with smooth shoes uh, unless actually you live in a town or city at the time. Now, the reason for that is actually, as I learned when I was wearing those shoes going around York, uh, is it's really good for, for literally slipping and sliding, for almost mud skating in a time before pavements and gravel and this kind of thing. In fact, there's a street in York called Pavement because they got so excited when the pavement was installed. And they were, oh, look at this wonderful pavement. So, you know, hence. So the, so the point is, is that city shoes were designed to not get stuck in the mud. Um, and that's what we find, city shoes. And so reenactors, you've, I've seen it happen. I've seen people, uh, you know, charging in a battle, charging in a battle with their spear, slip. And it's dangerous. It's downright dangerous. So in that sense, just because we don't find it in the archaeological record doesn't mean I don't think it doesn't it didn't exist. And in this instance, a bit of fuzz around the edge, you know, the equivalent of a hobnail boot, it's fine. Uh, it's the... It's, it's, it's the it's the castles primarily. Well, what's he doing? What's this guy doing? I mean, there's no there's no shield uh, wall. There's no formation. I mean, yes, Vikings were much looser in their warfare. There was much more much more of an individual sort of heroic tendency uh, to battle, and also actually in particular duels, for example, um, they were very relatively slow affairs as far as we, we can tell. Um, and actually that's something that the Vikings TV series I think did quite well, was this, was especially one-on-one -on -one dueling, uh, the use of shields and and almost, uh, almost deeply choreographed and prepared movements. Because these things, you know, especially the swords at the time, they were quite heavy. Um, they weren't sort of, you know, rapiers and this kind of thing so it's almost like a like a thwacker kind of thing um but what's he doing i know he's doing an assassin's creed thing he's kneeing a soldier in the face and a soldier who's wearing again slightly dodgy not particularly <clears throat> from any time or place armor in the face and uh yeah he uh oh there you go we're back to the thing let's just let's just analyze what's going on here so we have uh, a siege engine here where they're going to charge the door it's got a ram's head on the front because of course you always got a ram's got to have a ram's head on the front of your your gate basher in a medieval game except this is not a medieval game it's certainly not a, it shouldn't be a siege warfare game uh what do we have we have uh a impromptu a stake set up to 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 protect soldiers from from um uh, uh archers up on the walls we have what looks like, I mean, this wouldn't be out of place in a reconstruction of Conwy Castle. Uh, Conwy Castle was built, now let me just check the date because I don't want to get it wrong. Let's just, uh, 
I'm a little bit flustered, so it, it, uh, there you go, between 1283 and 1289. So Conway Castle was built uh, you know, 300 years or so after this. Uh, this, this. This tower in particular wouldn't be out of place in a reconstruction of Conway Castle. Um, my favourite castle, incidentally. It shouldn't be here. Uh, it, <laughs> and, and presumably, so I can, see, I can see a cross on the wall on a banner up there. So this must be a Saxon or maybe, I don't know, have we gone into France? Are we in France at this point? Is this a, a Gallic thing? <sighs> this ain't, this ain't right. It just ain't right. Anyway, let's move on. You've already, you've already heard me rant about that. Uh, so yes, yeah, nice and punchy, uh, shooting. Oh, actually what's going on there? What on? So there we go. Yeah, we get another. So this is a, 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 quite a small shield. Hey, is that actually a scram of CX or a CX? Oh, goodness me. Um, uh, the knife belt there. That's that, that's quite, an, yeah, that's hopefully a nice little detail at least. Uh, archery. There are various reasons to, to, to question the use of, uh, of archery like this at this time. But then again, this archer is facing what looks like a castle built in the 13th century. And actually a castle that, that's also, again, it's had time to fall into ruin. So this was impl Im this implies it was built earlier than this game is set. This isn't a new castle by the look of it. Um, you know, there's more ruins over there. And I mean, this, 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 oh, there you go. There's your ram's head. Got to have a ram's head. Throwing the axe. Now this actually, this, this is okay you know uh, we know we know that the that the vikings definitely preferred uh, and and used axes in warfare they used axes for carpentry um in fact they they i mean we have recovered chisels and hacksaws and things like that actually actually uh but but it's uh, it's not uncommon to to use only different size axes in for example the building of a ship um Looks like they tried to get inspired by Roman tower and fortification thing. <sighs> except, except they, except they didn't. I mean, if, if we just go back to that, a part of it, that bit might be Roman. That bit ain't Roman whatsoever. It's far too big, and this sort of horseshoe shape where it's curved and flat at the back, this thing here, it's, it's just not Roman. It's just not that over there. Mm, depends on the shape of it. Could be Roman, but it doesn't look like it is. It looks like it's another horseshoe shape, unfortunately. So maybe, maybe they're trying to go for that Roman. You know, Saxons have, have somehow built Norman keeps in Roman uh, castles with a weird sort of preview of what the what the next what's coming next in the medieval age. But uh, that ain't it. That, the, 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 this this isn't right. You know, um, and as I say. Uh, I, I I I don't enjoy bashing the game like this or bashing what what is going to be hopefully a really fun game to play like this. But I'm just disappointed because in previous instances they've they've been better than this. They've been better, and we've we've had better. Um, but I think because it's Vikings, uh, it suffers from a particular cultural currency that they're that they're desperate to copy and to get on the back of. For example, linked with the Vikings TV series, linked with things like The Last Kingdom, and also linked with a popular cultural zeitgeist at the moment. You know, there's lots of blokes around with a um, the U-shaped Roman tower. Well, even then, the U-shaped Roman towers weren't that massive, unfortunately. You know, it's... And also that the scale of warfare in this in, in this instance isn't isn't that massive. It, it it just doesn't look Roman. It just I mean I understand yes they're trying to, maybe they're trying to be inspired by it maybe they are but and and, and but this, this this brings me to to one of my questions about about Vikings about prehistory uh, about essentially these 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 spaces of time that exist between other major big big chunks of time um oh someone just rang the doorbell just a second <laughs> I'm 
apologies for that. Um, <laughs> this sort of uh, game, or this sort of time period, suffers from a couple of things. I think, first of all, it's right on the edge of uh, of history. You know, it's um, it's it's at a time just when when more solid historical records were coming about, and so. It suffers from that thing of being half mythological, and which is fine. And again, there's lots to play with there, but it it gives it means that people, especially game designers and 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 uh, um, people who are doing the art direction for these sorts of games, are far too tempted to go way off piste because oh, no one really knows, no one really knows, but actually we do know. It just wasn't written down. If so, I mean, we have a lot of good evidence for, for, for stuff, especially, for example, what Roman castles or castras or however you want to describe it, forts look like. Um, and the second thing is, it's, it, it's sad to me that we're still, so for example, in the, in the description for this game, uh, it's described as being in, uh, in the Dark Ages. In fact, let's, uh, let's bring that up, shall we? Um, so... Uh, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There we go. Uh, it's described as being in uh, Dark Age, Dark Age England. Uh, come on, where are you? Um, a, a, a phrase that 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 isn't really used anymore by by serious historians um, for various reasons. Partly because it doesn't really describe anything uh, other than a perceived lack of civility and civilization. Um, uh, let's see, uh, okay, Ubisoft, let's try that, uh, there we go, this might do, oh, go away, there you go, become a Viking legend in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, raid, explore and conquer the ruthless open world of England's Dark Ages. Uh, we come back to this this thing of the fact that actually at this point England wasn't really a thing, but then the fact that actually they're, they're using terminology that's outdated and it brings me, it makes me wonder who are they, who are they consulting with on this other than using what feels cool and what feels cool is probably actually up to 50 years out of date in terms of actual history and actual thinking and knowledge and understanding of how how this this time was <sighs> might just as well have done assassin's creed in king arthur i wouldn't be surprised if they already did it, it king arthur absolutely they just announced a beowulf um uh, dlc for the game which Again, I don't mind that because actually there's fun to be had in Beowulf. There's fun to be had with, 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 with playing with the stories of the era. And I know that they did that with Assassin's Creed Odyssey as well. Um, they did, uh, uh, I think Medusa turns up actually. In, I seem to recall anyway. I haven't played it because um, frankly I got uh, bored of the game, unfortunately. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a bit grindy. But I don't mind that. It's, it's more just... It's the lack of care, the lack of attention to detail, you know? Um, isn't it currently commonly used early Middle Ages? You can you, you can say early Middle Ages, yep. Um, absolutely, that describes uh, this period. Um, and, and in that sense, it, that, the reason why the distinction is made is primarily because of uh, of the fact that that it doesn't have a lot of the the the, the 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 things like castles, like hierarchy of, of society to the extreme of later medieval times, or for example, uh, things like um, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, uh, the 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 top down, you know, king, barons, freemen, serf, uh, kind of structure of society. Um, feudal, I said sorry, feudal society that later medieval times do. It, it was a different world, and I think this is this is the thing where actually they've missed a trick as well. Is that that there's a as with the Romans and as with 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 this this time period as well, they had the potential to show us how alien, how how not like our ex common expectations the Viking era was, but instead they've gone with something that's, as I've said before, pseudo Errol Flynn. You know, um, uh, it wasn't there a movie called The Vikings? Um, 
Oh, what, what was that? Let me just check that. The Vikings. It, star uh, it stars uh, some classic Hollywood um, Hollywood uh, actors. Uh, the Vikings movie. Uh, no, not TV series. 1958, The Vikings. There we go. Tony Curtis was in it. Um, Kirk Douglas. <laughs> You know, so we're, we're, we're not a million miles off from from a movie from 1958 or from depictions of the medley, medieval period from as early as 1938. Errol Flynn did Robin Hood in 1938. Um, Dark Ages sells more. And you know what? I'm kind of fed up of that excuse. I'm not blaming you for saying that, but I'm fed up of that excuse. I just am. You know, people say, oh, well, you need to sell newspapers. That's why they constantly say archaeologists are baffled. Um, but you don't, you don't, that's, if, if, if selling news, if selling the game means that, that you just rely on, on 50, 50 year old stereotypes, then what, what is the actual point of the good work that archaeologists and historians are doing? to better understand this period. And this is this of course I've, I'm going to have that perspective because I'm an archaeologist. But what is the actual point of any of this? What's the point of actually of even making a game right now about the Viking era if it's if it's if it's just dealing in stereotypes that 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 we all know already. I mean don't we all then don't we already know how the game's going to play then? You know, it, I I want I've always enjoyed the 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 exciting insights and and the fun little moments in the Assassin's Creed games that, that are based on good research or on, on character-driven research or on, you know, flights of fancy about what Leonardo was like as a person. But but fun, you know, as opposed to just wrong. Um, I'm disappointed by this game uh, as in the past, especially newer games looked fairly accurate. However, this one speechlessly, not so much. Absolutely, William Cullen. Uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance should have taught people that reality sells by now. And I, I, I agree. Incidentally, I'm, I hope to do a Kingdom Come Deliverance stream tomorrow. Uh, I was going to stream today, but um, uh, we, my lovely wife and I got hooked on Uncharted 4. And uh, we just finished the game, actually. It was lots of fun. I very much enjoyed that. And that's the other thing as well. You see, I can enjoy a game like Uncharted. I love fiction. I love over the top. I love even a game where you play as a downright, you know, treasure hunting um, uh uh, outlaw, uh, but if you're dabbling in reality, and if your if your game franchise is in this instance again, make it try, make it meant to make you feel like it's kind of real. Um, I get, as I say, there aren't any dragons in the sky. Um, if this is this isn't uh, Westeros, then then why make such egregious errors? I I just don't understand it. And, and, and I mean, sort of said, looking at you, Jackson Crawford, and the thing is, Jackson Crawford, you know, I have faith in him to have, have given them advice, uh, certainly about, about culture and language and stories, etc. But I, I wonder how, how much he knew about the archaeology uh, or how much they listened to him about the archaeology. Maybe they went, oh, well, you know, whatever. We have a vision. Um, <laughs> and this vision is driven by, you know, uh, movies from the 1950s or TV series uh, or whatever it is that 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 is the coolest. Um, I, I like that Stonehenge is in the game. Apparently, that's kind of cool. I'd like to go there if if we get to. But uh, as a Norwegian, I'm curious on how they portray Norway in this period. When you look at the trailer, does that seem accurate um, or way off? Uh, it look it looks a little grander than probably Norway was at the time. Frankly, though. Uh, the, the the Saxon kingdoms look a little grander than they probably were at the time in terms of scale and you know arch architecture and so on and so forth. Um, I think, well, that's actually something else that I haven't even touched on. Uh, should these guys even be from Norway? Uh, you know, it, it was mainly Danes who were attacking uh, Alfred the Great, hence Dane Geld, uh, the gold that was paid to the Danes to go away. Um, Norwegians tended to go to Scotland and Iceland and even over to Dublin, for example. Um, and there's a good reason for that. If you sail straight west from Denmark, you end up in northern England. Straight west from Norway, you end up more or less in Scotland. Um, so uh, should these guys even be Norwegian? 
And again, I think that comes down to a stereotype, unfortunately. Someone at Ubisoft said, no, Norway, Vikings, let's make these Norwegians. And to be fair, in the TV series, The Vikings, actually, they've gone from having a more general sense of Scandinavia, for example, uh, this is the Kattegat, uh, the main town, at one point, it was implied it might be in Sweden or it might be somewhere near Denmark. But then in later series, they've, they've, they've just gone, doubled down on the notion that this is Norway that they're in. Um, which I suppose makes sense, you know, from Norway, you, you, can, you can get to lots of places that they're talking about in the game, in the TV series. But anyway, that's an interesting thing. Should these guys actually be Danish as opposed to Nor Norwegian? Um uh, depend. It depends if the if the the great heathen army is involved in this game or not. Um, anyway, that's just a thought. I mean, I know actually lots of Danes are involved in that in that army as well. Uh, hmm. uh, I'm excited to play the Tomb Raider series and Uncharted both. Uh, yes, well, Tomb Raider, uh, the uh, Crystal Dynamics Tomb Raider. Now, now having finally played Uncharted, because I I wasn't a PlayStation boy until recently. Um, uh, I just grew up in a Nintendo household. What can I say? But actually, um, so playing um, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake uh, sort of remastered version of 1, 2, and 3 that was recently made free on the PSN network, um, and then playing Uncharted 4, now I can see where Crystal Dynamics got their Tomb Raider reboot ideas from and how actually the two games have, or franchises have uh, influenced each other uh, leading up to Uncharted 4. So... Uh, they're good. They're, again, they're fun, you know, and, and I'm all for fun. I'm all for f supernatural in these games. I'm all for for sci-fi, but, but I'm I'm just not impressed with this. And and at the risk of rambling on and on and on, uh, it's it's mainly about things like, like this sort of warfare. Siege warfare in a Vikings game against a stone castle. That, that, that is not a Roman castle. That's just too big. <laughs> too big, too massive, too varied in terms of the, the architecture. Um, that's, a, that's a 13th century castle, at least. Um, what's it doing in there? Anyway, I... <laughs> well, I've been rambling on now for, for a little while. Let's, let's see, how, how long have I been, I've been uh, meandering? Uh... 37 minutes now. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to leave it there, I guess. But uh, I just ha I just had to talk about this. It's been on my mind, and it's been it's been really bothering me. And I uh, I don't know when it's going to stop. I don't know when, um, for example, as I say, things like prehistory. So in uh, Far Cry Primal, you know, uh, there were things to praise in that game. I loved the construction of language, for example, and aspects of, of the portrayal of the uh, the Paleolithic uh, hunter gatherers that were in there. But even in that game, they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't imagine a world where farming wasn't on the horizon. They couldn't imagine a world where pottery didn't exist. They couldn't portray a world um, which wasn't approaching modernity. And and in this instance, in the Vikings situation, there's a weird thing where they can't imagine a world that isn't uh, that isn't that isn't part of the pastiche of history as we see it now as a modern person. So looking back from modernity, we see the Middle Ages, we see the Vikings, we see the Romans, we see so on and so forth, and we can't help but kind of merge them all together. For example. Uh, you know, in, in that sort of way, people might look at the way that the the raven here is, is portrayed on the screen and go, "Oh, look, it's Celtic -y artwork." You know, it's the way that people squash things together uh, without insight. And this game was an excellent opportunity to give insight, to share the insight of of of, of you know people who know what they're talking about and to use those i don't know a single viking or saxon or no, a northern european early medieval specialist who wouldn't have jumped at the chance to to help this game be be more accurate and to to be fun as well because you can find the fun in in the accuracy um you, you you can definitely find the fun just imagine if you if you could if one of your missions was hiding uh from bandits uh the uh the staffordshire horde you know, uh, wouldn't that be cool if, it, it, and, and it, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Do you feel like Ubisoft are aiming for a full circle? Oh, in, in going back, essentially now jumping back towards Altair in the Middle Ages, uh, the, the Middle Ages in the Middle East. Uh, who knows? 
who knows? I don't know what they're aiming for anymore. Um, I would, I've would. i seen people who, and I agree, actually, I would, would have quite liked them to go to maybe Feudal Japan, for example. That could have been fun. Um, but My Kings is very on brand right now. Uh, <laughs> and so I think that's why they've gone for My Kings um, and uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, getting back to the Crusades soon and reorganizing around Altair. Um, yeah, it may well be an attempt to come back around and do a reboot and follow the Capcom kind of Resident Evil thing that's going on as well. Improve on those classic games with new engines and new gameplay stuff. But who knows? I agree. Part of what makes fantasy elements impactful and surprising is when they are surrounded by reality. It's why Assassin's Creed 2's ending was so shocking. Yeah, actually, you're right. Yeah, when you're when you're storming the um, that is the one, isn't it? When you're storming uh the the you where well, you end up in the uh um uh the very famous chapel in 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 the in the Vatican. <laughs> Uh, it's escaped me for a moment now, but you you end up there and you're you're, you're fighting the Pope who is a a, Bor a Borgia, isn't he? I think, um, and it all goes uh, completely mental when he opens up one of the apples of Eden. You know, it, that's fine. That's again, it, that's that's the game. That's that's where you're because they're introducing sci-fi, they're introducing conspiracy and what ifs. Cool, whatever. That's the that's storytelling. Um, but they didn't, crucially, they didn't introduce into that something from, uh, you know, from from the from the eighteen hundreds in Italy into uh, into Assassin's Creed uh, at a time a couple of hundred years or three hundred years before then. You know, it, 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 they were they were mindful of the time frame that they were working in, and if they wanted to do something that was sci-fi, they had to bring in bring it in using things like. Yeah, you know, the the so-called first civilization that's part of the sci-fi uh, element of those of these games. Um, oh, it's really bothering me. Bothering me now. Hang on, Chapel, <laughs> Vatican. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, come on, Sistine Chapel, Sistine Chapel, Sistine Chapel. Obviously, obviously. Uh, yes, Vikings can certainly have a huge impact if they re if they recognise the way you travel and the interact through the map. Odyssey was locked because of your being lower level for some regions of the world. Um, yeah, I, supp I suppose free travel would be nice. You know, if you could just get in your boat and go anywhere, fair enough. I wonder how they're going to do the sailing mechanic. That could be interesting. Um, you know, I I know I know I ha I have. I I have friends who who have pre-ordered this game, three three friends so far, and they they're simply sold on the idea Vikings, and I can't wait to see medieval you know early medieval York for example see Jorvik, um, and I'm I can't help but be disappointed that that people are happy to be sold on such a uh, such a surface level. Um, there are other ways to, to to fulfill your Viking fantasies, you know, um, and 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 in this instance, I'm not sure I'm going to be following them. I don't I don't think I can support this game because it's well I don't know. It's just it's just it won't be fun for me actually. It just won't be fun <laughs> because it's so wrong, you know. Um, that long ship that excavated was in Scotland a few years back would be a neat thing to be in the game. Um are you talking about Ardner Merkin? Ardner Merkin. Um I don't think that was a long ship in Scotland. That was a it's a really it's a, a fairly small ship. Um a Knar, I think. Uh but yes, I guess it would be cool to go to, to Ardner Merkin and see a boat burial. Heck, throw in um uh Sutton Who, you know, throw in Throw in bolt boat burials elsewhere in the world just for fun. I don't again. I don't mind that so long as it's accurate, so long as it's to the period. And you, maybe if we could, if we could visit a, a funeral that's ongoing, you know, maybe if we could see how um, uh, how uh, different cultures. So in the Dane law, again, Danes, uh, not Nor Norwegians, unfortunately, in the Dane law, how. Uh, those rules and laws and religion were, were interacting with what was happening in the south of what became England um, and seeing the contrast of religious beliefs. Heck, see, maybe even seeing people who, who were holding on to two different religious um, or cultural uh, 
uh, backgrounds. Yeah, play with that. That could be cool as well if they, if they do that. Um, I'll probably get it in two or three two or three weeks after when the price will be lowered. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the other thing as well. I I'm you know don't hold me to it. I may end up playing it. I may end up seeing just what it's like. Um, but at the moment, it just feels like it's just going to hurt me. <laughs> It's a bit like the. I mean, I'm, this, I don't want to go off on a complete tangent, but it's a bit like the the final Star Wars movie. I haven't seen that uh, because it feels like it's just going to hurt me <laughs> because because of the way I, you know I know roughly what the story is, and it's like what's that? How they ended the whole thing? Goodness me! Um, and uh, to pay to be hurt. I don't know. I'm not really into. I'm not, I'm not a. Uh, what's the word? I'm not a. I'm not masochistic like that. Um, I. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, I, I'm, I'm rambling on now. I don't want to, I don't want to just sort of, uh, be here and, uh, be boring pe people eventually with, with my, my wafflings. Um, but I am disappointed. This, uh, th uh, this is cool, uh, leaving, uh, the port in Norway. But again, what's the size of that building? What the heck's going on there? Sorry, the more I look, the more confused I get. Um. But thank you for watching. Thank you for turning up. Thank you for, for, for sharing in this conversation. And also actually confirming that I'm not going completely uh, balmy in, in noticing this stuff, you know. Um, it's just a shame because they are forfeiting the one thing that separates Assassin's Creed games from other games, and that is historical fantasy. Um, they have four months until it be out to reimagine some of the historic inconsistencies. I don't think they can do that in four months. I mean, frankly, what they're... It, Ubisoft, uh, lately Naughty Dog as well, for example, as a as a publisher, have um, uh, have really been well. Uh, Rockstar, uh, they all these all these publishers in recent years have really highlighted this thing of crunch, where they even on plan, even with the planned product, they end up with uh, six months of people working hundred hour weeks to, to finish the game because the game is essentially it's released arbitrarily and that's the other thing as well that, that should be pointed out before I go is that this trailer was put together by uh, by salespeople wasn't it this, this was this was a PR stunt um, in calling it a gameplay trailer without any gameplay in it uh, and so I don't blame the people making the game I blame the people who are forcing the direction of the game who are forcing uh the, an arbitrary deadline to to pre to please you know the the uh, waxing and waning of the stock market etc and and the and the the board of the, of um of investors and i blame people who you know say things like this game and console and development footage representative of expected xbox series x gameplay uh, x gameplay um how is this remotely representative of gameplay and the answer is it's not it is it's a it's ad ad people um, playing fast and loose with with definitions, and clearly with also with the past as well. Um, crunch time, yeah, absolutely crunch. And so, uh, so yeah, so even with uh, even with with the time that they've got left, they're aiming for this, and they may they may even have to release something that's a little bit buggy. I mean, Watch Dogs, for example, from the same company, um, had very similar problems in terms of expectations and delivery they delivered below what they advertised in terms of graphics so i don't think they're gonna they're gonna wholesale you know change character models and shield shapes and whether whether or not a castle is in the in the landscape i think they're stuck on this trajectory and uh and we're gonna have to see where it ends up well in the 13th century uh if uh if this delightful images anything anything to go by um <laughs> apparently <sighs> yeah again thank you all for turning up it has been fun uh just getting this out getting this out and crucially if you want to play a game that 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 just knows what it is and is uh, is also got some great characters play uncharted 4 like i say we just we just finished it today and had a great time with it so uh, as ever, guys, until next time, uh, too bad, too bad indeed, definitely too bad. Uh, until next time, do take care. Mwah. Love to you all. Bye-bye.